Hey there, and welcome back to Hold and Modify, YouTube's most poorly produced, underproduced Amiga channel. And yes, today we've got the Amiga 4000 with its Phase 5 68060, and the Amiga 1200 with its TF 1260 68060. <laughs> Going head to head in Lightwave rendering. You gotta fire up Lightwave, because Lightwave just hammers the crap out of it. The particular details, the Phase 5 68060, this is Amiga 4000, is an RC1. All right, that's an RC1. So this is an old school, original 68060. The 060 in this 1200 over here is a RC5. So it's a little more efficient architecture and, and, and layout of the chip, so it runs cooler. Uh, but effectively, they're both, you know, they're both 50 megahertz, neither are overclocked and they're both able to deliver that 60 out of 60 punch. So I'm gonna fire up Lightwave here and let's see what they can do. This computer will rule the world. And once again, I gotta apologize. I'm filming off screen, but I really kinda of wanna keep this dynamic and let you see what I'm doing here. So I've loaded up the ray tracing benchmark scene that comes with Lightwave. And as you can see, I have adjusted the scene a little bit. I've turned off the anti-aliasing and I've lowered the camera to low resolution, which means we're at 320 by 240. If I go over here to the Amiga 1200 with its uh, really awesome InDivision Mark III AGA, so the screen doesn't flicker and it actually looks scaled properly. Uh, yeah, it's uh, 320 by 240 as well with no anti-aliasing. And then back over here on the 4000s, you know, native Amiga output, yeah, it's stretched and wide and looks weird. But I just want to be clear here, the only reason these two screens look different is just because this Amiga 4000 is using its native 23-pin output going to this uh, modern LCD LED monitor with a VGA input. So I don't have a Picasso in here. I know I mentioned in a previous video I was going to get my Picasso and have this monitor you know, running with it. But my Picasso is uh, currently, um, well, it's not really working. So, but yeah, so the 1200 over here has a nice, you know, square aspect display. I just, I don't want the, I don't want anyone to think there's any shenanigans going on here. It is just this 4000 and this 1200 against each other. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and press on the 4000. I'm going to press F9. And on the 1200, I'm going to press F9. Now, it doesn't matter that I didn't press them at the same time because we're going to get the uh, reported frame rendering time at the end. So there they go. They're both crunching away. And uh, let's see what they do. It just occurred to me, some of you might ask, why did you change the settings to no anti-aliasing and low, uh, low resolution? Well, I did that because I don't want to wait. You know, I am filming this, and of course, I could just sit here and hit stop and let it render, but I don't want to wait, you know, 10 minutes. So, spoilers, by the way. Um, so yeah, that's why I adjust the default settings of the benchmark. I just want to get this stuff rendering. The fact of the matter is this benchmark is so intense. It puts so much pressure on the CPU and the FPU of these Amigas that even the low res, no anti-aliasing rendering of this scene is plenty to reveal the power of these two computers, the 1200 and the 4000. The, AGA brothers in arms, as we might want to call them. Look at them. Look at them. You can almost feel the connection between the two. They know what they are. Where's the CD32? Where's the CD32? The CD32 is also AGA. Well, my CD32 is currently experiencing some RGB video issues, so there's no CD32 to join the AGA family of Amigas here. Um, I am killing time while this stuff renders. But, you know, maybe my words will be entertaining to you while we wait. Uh, maybe not. Maybe I should just hit stop and we'll uh, cut to this being done. Okay. Okay, so they are done. The 4000 is done, and there you can see the stretched aspect render. Yes, because it's, uh, again, going to a modern 16 by 9 panel with the native output of the 4000. And as we come over here to the Amiga 1200, getting the uh, same output but not uh, stretched, it's actually slightly squished. So even though this is a four by three panel and you know it is the preferred kind of aspect, it's still not Amiga aspect ratio. It is actually squished. The only way that I have found uh, to get Amiga output at the actual native Amiga aspect ratio is to use a 16 by nine monitor 
okay, like I have on my 2500 over here, and then use something like an RGB to HDMI that will have built-in scaling to map the Amiga aspect to the 16 by nine screen. So the fact of the matter is, to get this Amiga screen looking correct at the correct Amiga aspect ratio on a four by three modern display, we'd actually kind of need to letterbox the display. So the black bars at the top and the bottom. And I know this is supposed to be a video about me benchmarking the speed of the 1200 versus the 4000, but a lot of people always ask me about my displays. So this is why I'm spending this much time on it. But yes, uh, I'm sure there's a way with the Indivision AGA Mark III, you could probably adjust the uh, screen mode to do the letterboxing on a four by three screen to get the actual correct Amiga aspect ratio so that this sphere would actually be round instead of slightly squished. It is slightly squished this way. Whereas of course on a 16 by nine, it's just completely stretched out. Anyway, enough of that. Let's get to it. What time did the Amiga 1200 render this in? Well, let's see. Oh, look at that. 10 minutes and 24 seconds. That's pretty good, actually. That's that's for this ray tracing scene, even with my uh, adjusted settings, that's pretty good. And what did the 4000 do it in? Nine minutes, 59 seconds. So 10 minutes versus 10 minute 24. You know what, folks? That's pretty amazing. That shows you that the TF-1260 has come a long way from when it first came out. The various firmware updates they have done to it to flash the, uh, I guess if I'm using the right term, the CPLD for its FPU code has come a long way. That's really impressive. It's only 24 seconds slower than the native phase five, 68060 in the 4000. So there you go. That's the definitive proof of the speed of these two products. Um, wow, I, I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm kind of a loss for words. I thought the gap was gonna be larger but it's not, <laughs> that's really impressive. I mean, obviously you could say, well, for every 10 minutes, you know, you get one frame and over here, it's gonna be every 10 and a half minutes to get one frame, but you know, yeah, I guess that would add up over a long time period. But you know, in the short term, and, and keep in mind folks, that this is an extreme scene. This is a benchmark ray tracing scene. I, if I was creating content in my Amiga, I would never create a scene like this. This is just excessive pixel, CPU torture. I would never do this. So that's really impressive. These both are pretty much on par with each other. Kudos to the TF1260 team and what they've been able to do with it. And uh, of course, you know, phase five, way back in the day, your 6060, here we are 30 something years later, still cranking it out. Awesome. So there you have it. That's the Amiga 4000 versus the 1200. Benchmark CPU FPU test. Either option is awesome. Either option is uh, admittedly expensive. Yeah, but you know, for us weirdos that like Amigas with native CPUs and hardware, you know, this is what we do. All right, thanks for watching guys and girls and robots and people floating in space. Bye-bye.